Shed Town by Tony Pitts. Episode 4 Storm. Shed Town swelters in a foggy heat beside a sweating, sluggish sea. Its inhabitants cooling themselves with luscious lollies from the ice cream van parked up by the cluster of creosoted hutches. Carly, owner of the van, is the latest citizen to join the little encampment. Dizzy and dizzying, she and Barry already feel inextricably joined, cemented by something that feels right. Happy. Happy. Happy? Happy. They are happy. Also serene and at ease are Dave and Diane. Already having forgotten their pre-Sheddian life, they spend each day in aimless contentment. A project today. And today, it's time team time. What's it called again, Dave? It's a metal detective. Detective's metal. <laughs> so, what should I do now, Dave? Right. In a bit, stick snorkel in my gob, cover up my face and all of the snorkel except for the top, and then turn round and then go and do something else for five minutes. Like what? I don't know, something that'll make you forget exactly where I am. <gasps> I know. I'll go and say hello to Colin. He's been stopped in his shed for ages. Probably glad of a visitor. Good idea. Then, when you get back, you can use Metal Detective to find me. It beeps faster and faster if it gets closer to metal. But you're not made of metal, Dave. <laughs> ah, me fillings are, aren't they? And I've got some silver paper in my fag packet. Oh, you are clever. What about shovel? Should I shift it? Yeah, take it with. Right. right. Let's get you covered up. Oh. <laughs> get that in. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye mm-hmm. oh, bye. Mm-hmm. Cheeky face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. You're right in there. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm off then. Eh, Dave? Mm-hmm. It's exciting, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Others are not so at ease. William Pashnell, former janitor and handyman and practical architect of Shedtown, feels the place to be essentially his. And things are not the way he would like them to be. Some people are not conforming to geometry. Some people don't seem to understand. Father, it's that what lifts us above the bloody beasts. And while I'm at it, the outer gyratory path that I've marked around the sheds is a clockwise route. Clockwise, Father, though some people see fit to use it willy-nilly. And when did we agree to have a bloody ice cream van stuck in the middle of the place? And Jimmy, half pleased with, half envious of his friend Barry's newfound love, gazes adoringly from afar at the aloof, insular, beautiful Eleanor, forever at the other end of the beach, head down, Sifting and collecting bits and pieces. Oh, hello, Eleanor. I didn't see you there. Eleanor, I was just... (sighs) And on the highest dune, overlooking this panorama, stands a one-legged figure, staring out to sea. It is Wes, still as a heron, burning eyes fixed on the horizon... And suddenly, a twitching in his groin. Something is starting to stir below. A stirring that signals trouble for every Shedtownian. Uh-oh. Here it comes. Colin! Colin! Oh, you must be boiling in there. I brought you a lolly. It's got loads of ice in it. Cool you down. Hurry up, it's melting and dribbling up my arm. Colin! Would you mind if I come in? Colin? Hi, hi. Is that Wes? What's he shouting? Hello there, my children. What's to do? It's Wes, look. Seems to have something on his mind. Now. That'll be one of his demons, getting them all fired up. Haven't given him his morning exercise yet. Ah, I see we're all gathered. Good. There's a few things need sorting. First of all, this bloody ice cream man. He's easy there, Wes. Easy, lad. Is it that nasty spirit upsetting you again? It's coming. Well, hold still, my boy. I'll make it go. 
in nominee Patrice. Get off me! Don't fight me, devil! Get off me! He's coming! Ah. Me cock! Oh no, you, you filthy sprite! Me weathercock! You what? Me weathercock! When storms are coming, I get a tingle down below. We need to get ready. Yeah, okay, Wes, nice one. Very convincing. Real sweat, too. <laughs> now, who fancies a sausage but sandwich? I mean it! Bad stuff coming! Sausage sandwich. That very fella. Who have you one, Carly? Let's share one. Never mind about sausage sandwiches. I've got a list of important I matters here as long as your arm. Oh, see? No, it's Colin. I found his note in his shed. So look, do Gone to find out where I am? Oh, bloody hell. He can't go wandering about him. Not in his state. Uh, told you, told you. Bad stuff. Oh, yeah, thanks, Wes. Right, search party, I think. Morning. Johnny. Ah, hello, you chaps. Oh, glad you're all here. Now, I hope you're not going to shoot me. I'm only the messenger. Oh, bad stuff. It'll be bad stuff. Ah, spot on, I'm afraid, lad. It looks like the council are about to send you all packing. Some sort of eviction order. What? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Right, right, shh. One thing at a time. What's it all about, Johnny? Uh, a bit sketchy on the details. It's enough to say they've got some sort of bylaws on their side, and I'm afraid they're gunning for you. When? I haven't got an ETA, old chap, but uh, pretty imminent from what I gather. Oh, I don't know. All right, all right, calm down. Shush. Right, first things first. We'll split up and look for Colin. Father Michael, Wes, you look along the cliff top. Jimmy, you have a scout round in land. Right. Me and Carly will look along the beach. Dan, you can stay here and in case he comes back. Yeah, right. I'd be uh, happy to lend a hand. Oh, thanks, Johnny. You can come with me. And I'll stay here and work on the defences. If they're coming for us, we won't go without a fight. Bleeding council. What are you drawing, William? Uh, front elevation, side elevation and plan. All right. They can't kick us out, can they, William? They can bloody try, but I'll tell you this, I ain't leaving. No way. Oh, we're not doing out wrong, are we? Why, I hope they find Colin and all. Ooh, who's this? There's a woman, look. I'll go and see what she wants. Help you. Are you selling pegs? No, madam, I am not. I am here to represent Ruthley's Council. I am here to serve you with papers. We don't get papers, Duck. Dave listens to radio and tells us when out was going off. You know, like when Lady Di died, and that other one that went mental, Lady Gaga. Oh, aye. What's to do here then? She's selling papers, William. Ain't got no pegs left, have you, love? I am hereby serving you with notice that this development of standing structures contravenes articles 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 15 and 18 of the Town and Country Planning General Development Procedure Order 1995. Specifically relating to standing structures, foul sewage and utilities, proposed existing elevations... Well, you can take your papers and stick them right up your articles. We're staying, you sour-faced trollop. Your abusive language and aggressive attitude are duly noted, sir. Meanwhile, suffice to say that if you haven't dismantled these sheds and moved on in 24 hours, it is my intention to return with my designated team of bulldozers to raise this site to the ground, accompanied by a senior council official and relevantly appointed bailiffs. Good day. Oh, well, I didn't like her, did you, William? Right, mardy ass. Surprised anyone's bought pegs off a woman like that? What does she mean? All that what she was saying? It means, love, that we're going to have to fight for our lives. For the lives that we chose. She won't bury us. No, she won't bury us. Bury. Bury. Oh, Dave. I forgot all about him. What if he's suffocated? I'll never forgive myself. Where's that metal detective? I'm coming, Dave! I'm coming! And out up and away from Shed Town, in Town Town, Colin now wanders up the depressingly low high street and into a Pennine pet shop. Like him. He's lovely, isn't he? Mama Zet. And two sold t'other one to a mechanic from Bolton. Miss Woodshoff, he were. This one's pining, I think. 
He's hardly moved a muscle in the last two weeks. Off his grub and all. Come on, fella. You're a bit fed up there, buddy. Feeling the weight of things. Let's have a look here. Hey! Look here, little hint. Cage doors open, you daft monkey. No need sitting there on your own in all your mess. Oh, careful, he'll bite. He won't. That's it, fella. Come on. That's it, here you go. Yeah, that's it. Better out, isn't it? Up you go. Is that right? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> that's a good one. You've nearly got me believing you understand what it's chattering on about. Not very likely, is it, missus? You're a monkey. Ah, <laughs> too right. Oh. I'll take him. Right, so. Photographs, is it? On the beach, with kiddies. You'll coin it in. Licence to print money. Five or a go. Nah. We'll just enjoy sunshine together, won't we, fella? And the wind. And the rain, won't we? <laughs> yeah. oh, Dave! Dave! Dave, can you hear me? Speak to me, Dave! Oh, oh. oh are you okay, Dave? Let me get that snorkel out of your mouth. Oh, love. Blimey, I must have fallen asleep. You've been asleep? Yeah, it's dead comfy here it is. Oh, Dave. I forgot all about you. Then when I remembered, I got the metal detective and looked and looked and looked. I found an empty tin of beans and 23 pence in loose change before I found you. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, are there missing anything exciting? Oh, where the hell is he? You okay, Johnny? It's a bit of a climb. Should we have a little rest? No, 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 let's, let's press on. No, no, let, let's have a little rest. Oh. oh, this weather's horrible, isn't it? So muggy. I don't think I've ever seen a sky like that before. Yes. Extraordinary, isn't it? Extraordinary. I, no, I ought to let Eleanor know where I am. I wonder, could you call her for me on your telephone? Yes. Yeah, thank you, of course. I'll probably get all tongue-tied, though. It's quite something, your Eleanor, isn't she? She's so... Well, I don't know how to put it. Hey, maybe you're not the man to say it to, eh? <laughs> anyway, what's the number, Johnny? You know, I don't think she was thinking straight when she rang the council. When she what? When, when she... Ah, yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't say earlier, did I? <laughs> but the thing is, Jimmy... She, she was frazzled. Complete lack of sleep. She got all head up and... But, well, I know for a fact that she sincerely regrets it. Oh, oh dear. Johnny? Yeah. Johnny? It's all, it's all right, Johnny. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you, mate. And Jimmy watches in horror as the old boy goes down in instalments, holding his arm... I screwed up like frog's fists. His heart is under attack as free radicals spit fire into his cathedral core. Time is up and the shed is return, ready or not. They arrive in hope rather than expectation, but all hope takes a double dip dashing. Life's becoming a layered cake of misery and fear. Any news? Aye, but not about Colin. Oh, why? What's up now? Oh, some gypsy woman's put a spell on us. What? The council, Diane. How many more bloody times? The council served us with papers. We've got till two tomorrow afternoon, then I've got to flatten the bloody place. Oh. They can't. That's wicked. There's something rotten here. Look at that sky. I, th I think we should pray. I think we should arm ourselves. Gather pebbles. I can knock up some slingshots. David's against the Goliath. How many times do we have to tell you? It's coming. We've got to get shelter now. No. What are we doing standing no. around here talking? I don't like this. All right, all right. Calm down, will you? 
Right, where's Jimmy? And where's Johnny? We said two hours, didn't we? And where the bloody hell is Colin? I woke up happier than I've ever been this morning. Oh, what a bloody day! Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself. What? <laughs> Dragging an old man on some wild goose chase, and for what? To find your lunatic friend. Hey, listen, he wanted to come, right? It was his idea. He wanted to help. Why make can... him climb that hill? Have but... you not got an ounce of decency in you? Well, if he... Oh, I tell you, if anything well, happens... Decency? About... Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? They're dubbing us into the council. Just because we're trying to live a bit differently, find some kind of happiness. Oh, you call yourself an artist. Yeah. Oh, don't make me laugh. You're a fraud. That's what you are. If you think I'd deliberately do anything to hurt your granddad, you must be sick in the head. Ah, uh, oh, what's that point? And Jimmy crashes out, bangs through the endless fire doors along the corridor, round the corner, and follows the signs out into the blackberry jam night. And Eleanor cries silent tears and feels the waiting room beat like a failing heart and can't feel the dental tiles beneath her feet. A violently silent day dawns, a heavy warm dawn that chases away the seabirds and shadows as the sheddists emerge raw and anxious into the hours in which their lives will surely change. What time did you get back? We were worried sick about you, Jim. Middle of the night. I was at the hospital. Tony's had a heart attack. No. You're joking. You're looking for Colin. I wasn't thinking. We went right up to the tops. He didn't say anything. It was too much for him. Well, how is he? What did he say up at the hospital? Oh, I don't know. I was going to stay, but Eleanor turned up. Eleanor? God, is she OK? Do you want to go back? Be with her? No, no, no. She's the reason I left. She blames me. <sighs> so no sign of Colin? No. No, not yet. It's my fault. Oh, is it Ella's like? How is it your fault? It was my idea, wasn't it? Shed town. I persuaded you all to do this. Living bloody sheds on a beach. Hey, hang on a minute, mate. You didn't persuade anyone. You didn't have to. Moving here, doing this has been the best thing I've ever done. And it's the same for the others and all. You just had the vision, the, the bravery to change your life. Our lives. Thanks, mate. Right, listen, can you carry on a search for coal? Because I, I just want to get something to eat, a bit of a wash, and then get back up to the hospital. Check on Johnny. Meet you back here this afternoon. There might not be any here for you to come back to, mate. It's back! It's back! Colin's back in today! Yeah. <laughs> We're a monkey! Oh, fantastic! A oh, what? Oh, oh, Colin, yeah. mate, nice we thought we'd you, lost you. Nice but don't you ever do that to us again. I'm sorry. Look, look, Ollie, I'm sorry. But, you know, for the worry and the pain, but, but I just... I needed to find some peace of mind. You know, I'd lost the peace in my head. It, it was just too much. I thought too much. It, it was like, like a big Ferris wheel, I thought, and I couldn't stop it. It was just going round and round and round. And, and then when I read all that stuff about how... Huge it all is, and, and, and tiny. It just lost me. I, I lost it. And then I found this one, didn't I? <laughs> did he teach you something, Colin? He, he did, love, yeah. He did. His cage door weren't locked. He, he was in a cage, see? I, I'm trapped and I'm so alone. What is he on about? Well, it's hard to put into words, will you? But I, I thought it was all a dream. But I couldn't work out whose dream it was. And then it all flooded in at once. Like loads of lights going on, joining everything up. It is a dream. But there isn't a dreamer, and, and the cage is only locked. It, if we dream it is. Are you popped up, Colin? I understand you, Colin. Sounds to me like you've just met a man called God. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or a monkey called Marty. Oh, is that what he's called? He's cute. Oh, that were Martin's name. We used to get us chips off. But he weren't a monkey, he were a fella. 
He had a dead hairy neck though. Oh no, mate, he fell at ease in the hoodies, eh? Look at the sky. Just look at it. The sky above is solidifying into a huge grey clump of breathless day, and they feel fear. A Paleolithic eclipse is upon them. This is it. It's the big one. Oh, something's up. Something's really, really up. Something terrible. I told you. I'm starting to wish you'd never dug me up. Hang on. Hang on. Digging. Digging. Yeah, that's it. That is it. William, quick. Those papers. The papers they served you. Where are they? In the argument. Eh? Right. Hang on. Now, town and country. Uh, 5 8, 1990. Got it. Yeah. Look, there it is. There it is in black and white. Standing structures. Standing structures. Am I missing something? Standing structures. I get it. That's genius. <laughs> In the name of God, will somebody explain what the fact's going on? No, if we dig a hole. No, 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 holes. If we dig holes big enough and put our sheds in the holes, then they can't be defined as standing structures, can they? They'd be below ground level. The windows and the roofs are letting the light will be OK. Well, I, I would be safe because looking at the sky, it looks like we're in for the mother and father of old storms. I told you. Look how dark it is now. It's only ten in the morning. Right, what time are the council coming again, William? Two. Two o'clock. Right then. Right then, dig! Dig for your lives! Dig for victory, everyone! Come on, dig for us! And all set to digging. They dig with an injustice fueled anger. Deeper and deeper, hour after hour. Sweat and sand blind them, brows are mopped, spades dropped, blisters burst. And into this feverish arena goes Anna. She stands and watches the sand fly and can't help but cry. Manual labour always does. It seems so noble to her. Eleanor? Eleanor, how is he? How's Johnny? He's okay. He's gonna be okay. Oh, thank God. Oh, look, I'm so sorry for shouting at you last night. I didn't mean any of it. Didn't you? No, 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 no. Well, well it was true. Listen, you, you don't owe me an apology. I've been so stupid. I rang the council to complain about you and some dreadful woman turned up. And she's gonna evict you. I never meant for this to happen. I, I should have thought. And Johnny told me what happened and he said if it wasn't for you getting him to the hospital so quickly, he would have... Well, well I, I'm sorry and, and thank you. Oh, no, no, look, but let's start again, eh? Yes, <laughs> I'd like that. So, what's going on here? What are you doing? Oh, you're a dreadful woman. Yeah, you're right. I'm oh. afraid she is going to evict us. Or at least she thinks she is. Look, I haven't got the time to explain, but if we can just finish digging these holes in the next 15 minutes, I reckon we can stay. Got a spare spade? Well, yeah, I can probably find you one. <laughs> right. Well, come on, then. What are you waiting for? Let's dig. Come on. Yeah. And now the rain comes, slowly at first, as if to toy with them. Warm, sweet, windswept rain. Only occasional splashes on the sepia sand foreplay to the damn good seeing two to follow. Cease! Cease, I say! I demand it! By the power of Grayskull! Jesus! On the Michael! Thank you! You will obey me! Come on! Come on with me to your shed! No, my son. All holes are dug. All sheds are lowered. Except Dave and Diane's. So full of their toys and knickknacks, it's proving practically impossible to shift. Well, this is ridiculous. How much bloody stuff have they got? Oh, hey, Sparry, look! Look! And across the sands, two massive bulldozers, monumental diesel crabs, slowly crawling ever closer. And up ahead, Debris Diadon, like Thatcher in a tank leads the way, a panzer division of conformity. There it is! Onwards! Onwards! Our heroes momentarily stop in mute horror as the storm rages all around. They're not going to do it in time. Then Carly springs to life, dives through the serving hatch of her little powder blue ice cream van, starts its tiny little engine, 1300 cc's of determination slips her into reverse and pushes Dave and Diane's shed into its allotted slot like a fun pub Jenga. And across the sands, the rain now falls like stir rods, punching holes into every flat surface 
and big fat bulldozer man picks up his sit-down walkie-talkie with his sausage fingers and clicks his intentions. That's it, call it a day. Can't work in this weather. I would remind you that you are contractually obliged. Can't see out my cabin on health and safety. And a desperate Deborah Dearden jumps from her Everyone Different, Everyone Matters Ford Fiesta van and into the huge red monster of destruction and guns its mighty engine. Then I'll do it then. I'll do it. And Dave and Diane run almost horizontally towards a now submerged shed door. Jump in, jump through the skylight! Jump, Dave! Dive! One leap and they're in. And the whole of Shed Town now hunkers in its sandy bunker and soaking wet, chunky jumper steam. And they hold on to each other like under siege meerkats beyond comparison. And outside, the raging storm swipes the raging bull of the bulldozer and throws it across the sand. And Deborah Dearden rattles around inside like a lizard in a tin. And there she is, trapped. A brittle herd bottle blonde monkey in a metal and perspex cage. Upside down now, the bulldozer's beer can floor chimes with her broken bones. And then, calm. And a moment, then a subterranean cheer lifts up from beneath the beach and floats into the bay above and up and up to the sunlit headlands and good prevails at least for one more day. One day of goodness at a time. All we can ever hope for, for those of us who dare to hope. Shed Town, Barry was played by Tony Pitts, Jimmy and Johnny by Kevin Eldon, and Diane by Saran Jones. Eleanor was played by Ronnie Ancona, Colin by Johnny Vegas, and Deborah by Emma Fryer. William was played by Adrian Manfredi, Dave by Sean Dooley, and Carly was played by Jessica Nappett. The pet shop owner was played by Karen May, Father Michael by James Quinn, and Wes by Warren Brown. The narrator was Maxine Peake, and the music was by Paul Heaton. Shed Town was written and created by Tony Pitts. Produced by Sally Harrison and directed by Jim Poyser. It was a Woolly Bat production for Radio 4. Well, it's a bed town. Stay in a stay.